Before you bring your puppy home, it's always a good idea to get the equipment that you'll need uh, ahead of time. And I'm going to run through quickly some of the common equipment that we use uh, in raising a puppy. So first off, we have an X pen here. We'll go into some detail later on in the course about how we introduce uh, all the equipment. But uh, an exercise pen like this, they're four foot square. Uh, they can fold out. We use these uh, for confining puppies when we want them to have a little more freedom than a crate feel a little more included in the environment, but still not be able to get in trouble. Uh, these are obviously for supervised work, and we'll talk about that when we get along, but this is an exercise pen when we mention that. Here are two types of crates. We have a plastic airline crate type, and we have a wire crate. I have a tendency to like both kinds for different uses, and so we, I have both of them in my home. Uh, a puppy crate that's plastic, which I like for housebreaking, um, also because uh, it's a little easier to clean. Also, if I want the puppy to feel a little more isolated, I'm trying to keep them quiet. These are a little bit easier to cover. Um, they have less visibility. And I use the wire crates more for uh, what we call inclusion, where I want the puppy to be able to see what's going on around them. And so those are two common types of crates that we use. Um, any a caveat, and I'll mention it later in the course as well, any of the wire crates and the wire X-pens, you have to watch the dogs initially when you put them in there because puppies have a tendency to like to chew on the sides of them, and they can stick their mouth through and get them caught in the side of the wire. And so you want to watch your dogs initially when they're in any of the wire crates with the vertical bars for the X-pens, but these are two common things. When we start getting into training aspects uh, with our puppy, um, we're going to have a variety of different tools here. Um, here we have, um, so obviously you'll need leash, collar, and harnesses. So we have a regular leash. Uh, this is uh, a four-foot leash, but we have, I tend to get a four-foot and a six-foot leash. I'm a big fan in terms of training to have leashes that don't have loops on the end. I prefer them not to have loops because I let the dogs drag them a lot when we're training. And frequently with puppies, I'm not using the leash a lot to create behavior. And so I want a light leash. Um, that is there as a safety to basically block the dog puppy from running off and getting in trouble, but I'm not pulling the puppy around on it a lot, so it doesn't have to be heavy, and I don't like to hold my hand through the loop at the end, and if they drag it, that loop can catch on things. And so from a training perspective, I like light lines like this uh, in a four or six foot length. This is a six foot length, actually. <laughs> and a four or six foot length uh, that we can use as a beginning leash for our puppies. Uh, here's a long line. We're gonna, this is a cotton long line. Uh, they make a variety of different products here. They're, we use uh, a synthetic long line that's a, a light plastic material um, that doesn't pick stuff up if the puppy's dragging it around outside. These cotton long lines are very inexpensive and light and they're useful, um, but if you're outside and the puppy's dragging the long line when you're working, stuff tends to collect on this. It gets wet, uh, stickers get caught in it and things like that. So depending on the environment, you might want to look at some of the variety of long lines. Um, with puppies a lot, we're going to use harnesses. This is a little nylon adjustable harness. Uh, these type of, uh, will fit, you can adjust them, they come in different sizes, but you can adjust them to fit a wide variety of puppies. This is going to be crucial. Um, I don't have one out, but a regular flat collar that we're going to put on the puppy, any kind of buckle clip flat collar. Um, this is a, another line that you use in lieu of a long line. This is a flexi lead or any of the telescoping leads. Um, we use these frequently uh, when we're, we're doing, when we're walking puppies around and moving puppies from point A to point B. Uh, when, a, when dragging a long line around is uh, not productive or the long line can get caught on stuff, I can use the flexi lead for moving my puppy around a little bit as well. Um, we have training treat pouches. We'll talk about food and training treats in another segment but you might want to get something to carry that around in. Some people just use a plastic bag in their pocket or those sorts of things, but bait pouches come in a variety of styles. These are really useful to have as well. Uh, you're going to be doing a lot of food work with your puppy, so uh, having something that's convenient to carry your treats around in uh, and keeping that handy is going to be critical when you get into that spot. We're going to have, from an obedience perspective, we're going to have Tar foot targets, and so with puppies we start with an elevated foot target. You'll see when we get into the behavior create creation section of the, of the video, um, we're teaching one of the first behaviors we teach puppies is to put their feet on a target, and we use these livestock feed pans for the initial targets, and then they eventually get faded to flat targets. So here's an example of pre-made flat foot targets. Some people use Frisbees. These are designed as foot targets. These are fabulous. Um, and gradually over time, we're going to fade from a raised to a fat one, flat one. So you might want to get these as well. We're going to need a variety of toys for our puppy and a variety of chews. I'll show you some of the chews when we get into the food and treat training treat section. But some of the toys that we use, we'll use a variety of tug toys with puppies. So we have soft, fluffy, there's a wide variety of toys. And 
when you get into picking the appropriate toy, and we'll talk about it a bit in our play section, uh, it has to be developmentally appropriate for the puppy. So softer uh, toys for uh, smaller puppies, and they get firmer as the puppies get uh, older, or as they get kind of more intense in their play mat behaviors. So we have tug toys. We have a ball, so we play with little rubber balls. We frequently start out with um, small balls like this with a hole in it so that eventually as the dog starts to play with the ball, we can put a string on it. And we can also play tug and retrieve games with the ball. There's a wide variety of little balls as well. And then we're going to need certain types of self-entertainment toys. And the self-entertainment toys, we'll talk about how we integrate uh, um, interactive toys versus self-reinforcing uh, or self-entertaining toys in a, in a segment later on. But there's a wide variety, and I just chose one here. It's a treat dispensing ball that you put treats in and the puppy pushes it and treats drop out. There's a zillion of these on the market as well. And you can experiment with different uh, types of toys to occupy your puppy when they're left by themselves. And so. Um, uh, this is a few of the pieces of equipment you'll use. The other piece of equipment that's really useful and that we'll use a lot as we go forward with our dogs from puppyhood onward are these raised Karanda beds. Um, we start out with a Karanda bed like this uh, that has no, no bedding on top. They make a lot of soft beds that go on top of them as a, later on. And I use these soft beds to teach the puppies uh, to l ignore their bedding and lay on beds without chewing on their beds. But the Karanda beds are nice in that they're difficult for the puppies to chew on. There's no edges for them to get on. And so when we're initially teaching puppies to get on and off their Karanda beds, I don't use any of the soft, fluffy stuff on top. And then later, as my puppy starts to understand their bed work, we'll use the soft additions and put them on uh, and, and supervise the puppy to teach them not to chew on their bedding when they're laying on soft bedding. If you leave puppies unattended in crates or X-pens or on your beds with soft bedding, a lot of puppies will chew the bedding up. And if that becomes a habit, it can be problematic. But the Karanda bed is another piece of equipment we'll use extensively as we go forward.